How will Biden's visit to Kyiv have gone down in the Kremlin today, do you think? Well, not well at all. I mean, the, the fact is that, um, <clears throat> that, that uh, Putin, when he started this war, thought it was going to be over in three days. And, and here we are one year later. The Ukrainians have been very successfully fighting back the Russians. And the U.S. president is so confident and, and really calm to show up in Kiev effectively saying, you know, um, I don't feel at risk here. Um, I'm ready to show up in, in Kiev. The Russians are, are really not making me uh, want to stay away. And, and that's a very powerful message that um, makes Putin look weak, makes him look like uh, he's not this invincible tyrant. And that's not the impression that Putin wants to uh, uh, generate outside of Russia. It, it really isn't, is it? Uh, let's look ahead, shall we? Because a year ago it was meant to be Russian troops parading through Kiev. This war was meant to be over in a week. How damaged do you think Putin is uh, by his battlefield failures? Incredibly damaged. I mean, he's lost um, more than 100,000 troops. Half of their tank fleet has been destroyed. Um, he, he looks like a loser. And, and moreover, um, you know, this is Russia was supposed to be the second most powerful military force in the world. Um, I don't think they're even in the top 10 based on their performance in Ukraine. And so he's got a real problem because this invincibility image that he had now is gone and he's looking weak. And he and he, the one thing that's worse than anything for a dictator, a Russian dictator, is to look weak. And so he's got a real problem, real perception problem that he's got to fix um, if he wants to stay in power. OK, so I guess the obvious question is, what will Putin say tomorrow? What's your best instinct? You know him well. Well, I think what he's going to say tomorrow is something to the effect of it, we're not just fighting the Ukrainians anymore. We're fighting the Americans. We're fighting NATO. Because if, if, he, if he just blames his failures on fighting a, what, how, what he would have described as a second tier fighting force, then he must be a third tier fighting force. And so he's got to elevate the enemy. He's got to say that the enemy is really the Western world. It's America, it's NATO, it's UK, et cetera. And that way um, it justifies all the failures, deaths, and, and uh, all the terrible things that have been happening. And so I would suspect that that he's going to have a lot, of, there's going to be a lot of bravado, there's going to be a lot of fake uh, news and, and mis, <clears throat> misinformation in his speech. And moreover, he's going to characterize this as a fight. Russia is being effectively invaded by, by these um, very, very powerful Western forces, and he's a patriot um, looking after the interests of the Russians, something to that effect. Bill, let's have a quick look at a map, shall we, which is where the war is. Now, uh, this is where Vladimir Putin claims Russian territory is. This is what Vladimir Putin says Russia already owns. But have a look at the front line. Now, that's quite clearly not all Russian territory. Even by the most politest accounts in Moscow, the war can't be going particularly well for him. And it was, after all, Bill, those fatalities in Afghanistan that brought an end to the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan in the 80s and, and did quite a lot to bring down the Soviet regime. Russian fatalities are over 100,000 now, potentially, if we've got any decent count to go by. What effect is that having on the Russian people's view of Vladimir Putin and, indeed, the security of his own regime? Well, um, you, you would think that, 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 that uh, you know, if the mothers um, <clears throat> of Russian soldiers who were killed in Afghanistan could have ended that war and they only lost 15,000 in Afghanistan, then, then losing 100,000 in the first year of war in, uh, in Ukraine, the mothers would have an even more powerful argument. But that's not how it's seen right now. They, they, they have bombarded the airwaves with misinformation. Um, sure, the mothers are upset, but they're not upset um, with Putin. Um, they're, they're upset that, that they don't have the, uh, uh, the, 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 the weapons to go and fight the Ukrainians properly. It's, it's really kind of twisted logic, it's um, uh, weird propaganda, and to the extent that anyone is questioning the regime, um, they're shut up very quickly. People are being sent to jail for eight years just calling it a war. Um, they're going after people in all sorts of ways. And so um, I'm, I'm sure over time uh, the casualties will, will start to affect people's mood towards Putin, but, but they certainly haven't as of right now. Mm.